Hello, everyone. Welcome to Art Chat. Uh, I'm your host, Justin Donaldson, and today we are talking to Jamila Knopf. Jamila, Hi. how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Good, good. So what has your, your last couple of weeks been like, Jamila? I don't know. I spent a lot of time at home. <laughs> Like probably everybody else is going to mute that stream here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's been almost the same as usual because I've just been painting and spending time at my desk. But just the stuff that I've been looking forward to has been kind of taken away from me. I oh, no. was planning a trip to Japan. I was supposed yes. to be there for two weeks. I would have landed yesterday oh, back no. here. So I was really hope, uh, hoping to get some new inspiration, getting away from like the everyday life. Uh, same with conventions, they've always been like a really nice break to just uh, see some people, hang out, and just like get away from the desk. But that's all been like all not happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was I was so jealous about your Japan trip. Oh no, you don't but have to be. I, yeah, no, I don't have to be. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Uh, so you haven't been doing those things. What have you been working on? Um, I have been working on the Kickstarter. We just chatted uh, about it before we went live. Oh, uh, my art book will be go. launching. <laughs> that is yeah, so my, exciting. Thank you. Yeah, my art book will be launching in a week. And um, yeah, I've been just putting the content together, working with my publisher, 3D Total. They've been great getting everything ready. And other than that, I've just been painting. I keep making illustrations. Uh, I think my productivity has slowed down a bit because I don't know, I'm just like tired all the time now. I don't know yes. if it's the lack of fresh air or something, but it just like something has been draining my energy and I've been trying to get back into things and really I mean, that's, keep that's, making illustrations. That's the story that I'm hearing from everyone. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Everyone just feeling just hard to produce. Mm -hmm. at least at the at the quantity or quality they were before so what is your what's your kickstarter book your art book tell us about that what's it about my art book um it's basically a collection of the work i've been creating over the last three years uh -huh. um i've been painting before that but it's all been in like a different style some commercial work that I'm not too excited about, but this kind <laughs> of <laughs> um, animated movie inspired uh, thing with like bigger scenes and landscapes and the stuff that people know me for now. I think this is uh, when that started. So yeah. by now I have a collection that is big enough and there is also going to be like some ink drawings that I did uh, throughout Inktober for the last few years. and. Um, some sketches, tutorials, some writing, going into like uh, my influences, what inspires me, what a typical work day is like, uh, tools that I use. Nice. And there's like a tutorial section where I talk about stuff like highly requested, how to paint leaves and right. things like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, maybe tell us a bit about that. What, what are your influences we're having a look now at all the kind of things that you've been painting um, and i know you have this this other little project on the side mm -hmm. you've been working on yeah uh, <laughs> yeah can you tell us about that um generally i would say my influences are like twofold there's uh, -huh. uh the media i consumed when i was a kid like lots of anime yes um, i don't know if you had the same shows that i had but when i was a kid i watched like heidi the girl. I don't think I've elves. seen that one. Yeah, that's like really old. And I <laughs> always thought it was so nice, like the landscapes and everything. And of course, like Sailor Moon, things like yes. that. Uh, Ghibli movies, I still love to this uh -huh. day. And um, yeah, and the other one is uh, nature, because I spent a lot of time uh, in my grandparents' garden when I was a kid. They had this little like allotment garden out. Uh, far like from the town center where they lived like you had to go out with your like bike or car whatever like really far off and there was like there were fields or uh, fields around it and there was a canal and the forest uh -huh. and I was just like playing and hanging out and I 
at the time I didn't think it was that important. Right. I was just like, yeah, I'm here, I'm playing, it's it's cool. But <laughs> as like years went by after like being a teenager and all that, I kind of reflected back and thought what uh, really important times in my life were. And this was definitely one of them where I was just like influenced by all the nature that was around me. And now when I paint, I try to capture that feeling of what the world looks like through the eyes of a kid. Yes. So, and that's what I think uh, those anime backgrounds do so well. They have these like very vibrant colors. Everything looks like a lot more cheerful and magical than it actually is. And that's kind of the stuff that I try to do now. Yeah, there's this big sense of uh, nostalgia. Yeah. I think I always get accused of that and you get accused of that too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Our work being very nostalgic. Um, and I agree, I think I had very similar experiences. I, I spent a lot of my time when I was a kid escaping either to my room mm -hmm. or uh, out into out into the wild, and um, I didn't I didn't have such natural places to go to except for maybe finding some of the streams in the neighborhoods and such. But um, definitely, I feel like I, I reverberate with that a lot. Um, yeah. What What is your your other project about? Oh, my project. Okay. Uh... I'm bad at this because I'm not pitching it very often. Oh, no, it's, it's like good. Every, every time someone asks me, I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's called Phantasma. Yeah. And I don't, the thing is, I don't know what it's going to be, like what the final product is going to be. In the beginning, I thought it was going to be a, uh, an illustrated novel uh -huh. uh, where I had like full page illustrations with a story to go along with it. But now I'm just kind of, painting single illustrations moments from the story that i think might be interesting characters and seeing what kind of shape it wants to take in the end uh -huh. um, but basically it's just um uh, all the things that i like <laughs> i like nature <laughs> i like kind of post-apocalyptic feel where the world is basically at the place where humans have kind of gone back and right. uh, nature is taking over everything like big cities have been overgrown that's the kind of aesthetic I oh, really I love, love. so um, I'm just spinning a story around it that gives me an excuse to paint all these like cool places and characters that explore this world and there's also like supernatural forces going on uh -huh. it's kind of like a princess Mononoke meets some post-apocalyptic um, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know which one. I love it. <laughs> um, do you often get a chance to go out exploring these days? Obviously, yeah. you're, you were about to head out to Japan. Yeah. Um, where I live, not really. Yeah. Um, I live right in the city center, like really in the middle of the city. It's not a big city. Um, and there's lots of greenery around, which I love. So there's parks everywhere. And right now it's looking really nice because all the trees are like, <laughs> getting new fresh green leaves yeah um but to really be in nature i'd have to go out a little bit farther there's a forest here like in the city but it's not huge it's just like going for a walk see some trees that's the extent of it right now yeah and do you make a practice of, of being able to go for a walk mm, no I, I only i only ask that because i i absolutely do i need it for my sanity yeah yeah no going out and I should be better about it, but I'm I'm not. <laughs> you you also don't have kids, so there's yeah. that. <laughs> but that's like I have more time even, but I still don't do it. It's bad. <laughs> Fair enough. Ah, so tell us a little bit more about uh, maybe some of the things that you're that's got coming up after your Kickstarter. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the big thing I've been Some working on. future towards. plans. Yeah, that's like the thing. And I, I haven't really thought about what's going to happen after that, to be honest. That's I, perfectly fine. I feel like right now, everything I do is just like, oh, how do I get through the next two weeks? What's that's going to happen? That's, that's how I'm feeling too. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Maybe ask me again in like half a year and we'll see. But 
really i had i had two big goals uh -huh. uh, like art and life goals or let's say three the first one was okay. to be able to survive um painting what i want oh, God, yes sorry. <clears throat> and i was able to make that happen uh the second one was actually like doing a schoolism uh, yeah course or like I, I wanted to do a live workshop but it ended up being like an online course which is amazing too but I was just like I really like schoolism I've been going to these uh, live workshops and uh, I was like oh it would be so cool if I could do that if I could teach that way with like a crowd of people who really enjoy it and are into this thing and the third one was make an art book with a publisher so you're, you're there yeah I don't know what's next <laughs> that's so exciting <laughs> so, just like keep making art and seeing where it leads me so how is schoolism for you oh it's good i love it it's um really what did nice. you, I, what did you hmm? teach uh i made a course that is uh, called story driven illustrations and it's just basically what i think i'm most competent in or at so uh, -huh. uh I just put everything together, how I approach illustrations from like finding ideas, uh, really getting like from a broad idea to something more concrete that can be put into an image, um, sketching, using reference, um, all the stuff that goes into it, characters, uh, staging, set design, lighting, um, yeah, all the components that make up an illustration, I try to break them down and kind of explain my approach to them. And yeah. how you can change those different parameters to achieve different effects and emotional uh, connections to the viewers. And in the end, yeah, it ended up being like an eight week course with those wow. parts. And then on Schoolism, you have these one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, options. So I have six students every term and they take the course and they do the assignments I give them every week. They get that back to me and then I do like overpaints and record feedback videos and then I send them back or upload them and then that goes on until they're <laughs> done with the course and then the next nice. time the student comes in. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, it's really nice to see them growing and doing their assignments. I can't help but feel like really proud of them, even though some of them start and I'm like, you're amazing. What can I do? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm uh, pulling together my course at the moment. And I know I definitely have some of those, some of those people in my course. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, but then I try to remind myself that sometimes it's not only about learning like technical things but also just the framework of someone holding you accountable yeah to do your assignments just like stay on track and things and like that so it's kind of the the investment and the time and the yeah. commitment it's like okay i've always wanted to do this thing and i put money in now and now yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do it yeah and i totally relate to that yeah yeah but i'm so great uh, grateful i have this course because that's something that is stable especially right now because people really turn to like online learning. Yes. Yeah. You don't need to be in a specific location. It's great. That is so cool. So you were talking about before in your school class, talking about sort of coming up with an idea and getting it to a point where you're going to paint it. Do you keep a sketchbook sort of what does that early stage look and feel like for you? I'm not good at keeping sketchbooks really. I used to, drawing them a lot when I was trying to figure out my style and did a lot of studies. Now I don't really have, or I don't make that much time for that. I just yeah. like go from one full illustration to the next because that's what excites me more yeah. than just like scribbling, to be honest. Yeah. And um, for me, it starts out with writing or words most of the time. I just okay. like, have a very vague sentence in mind. So for this uh, piece, you're... Oh, sorry. Just playing right it. now. Yeah. There we go. It's just like girl sitting in the jungle in the rain. Yeah. And that's basically where it starts. And then from there, I ask myself questions like, what's the viewpoint like? Are we seeing her from the side or from the front, from behind, from above? Where's the quote unquote camera in the scene? Right. Uh, what's the mood like? What's the kind of lighting? What colors are there? What kind of vegetation is there? 
what's her uh, body language, where is she looking, all those things. I kind of um, answer those with like drawing little arrows and writing more information, doing word associations, things like that until it builds up more of a concrete image in my mind. And yeah. then I go out and then I look for reference and complete that image even more because I might by browsing like jungle images, I mean, see something that really speaks to me. So then I can pull that in and kind of go about that. Yeah. So when you're, when you're looking at this one, you're thinking about a uh, girl in forest training. Um, and you were saying that you had, so you were looking for more kind of word associations. Do you remember any of them that you came up with this one sort of further ideas and associations that you ended up putting in? Yeah. Um, let's see. Is that... I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect myself to remember necessarily no, I, all of it. <laughs> I I remember that I wanted it to be kind of subdued in in a way, like not too much contrast, just because of the the whole yeah. rain situation. Kind yeah. of something very almost dense and heavy. Uh -huh. So yeah, I guess. But I'm not sure if that's what I was thinking at the time. I could like go for my folders and look for it. But, um. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was looking at the, the tree that's behind her and I was thinking basically exactly that, the sort of the density of that bush. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a pretty dense bush. <laughs> I mean, I suppose it's also keeping the rain out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool. How is, since you've decided to start painting like this, well, I suppose, how did you decide to start painting like this? was a process yeah <laughs> it took me it was. forever to find that um because basically that's the story i always tell i always comes back to this i always thought i had to be someone else i always thought i had to do something that wasn't really me partly because teachers were telling me hey quit doing that anime inspired stuff do something else so i was always doubting myself and thought oh okay i guess this is not right, I guess, because you tell me uh, that I am, or like my taste is wrong. I have to right. choose something else. So um, then I discovered the whole uh, online art community and I discovered that you could be an artist for Magic the Gathering. Right. And I thought, oh, that's where you can make money and paint kind of the stuff that I like uh -huh. and people won't judge you for it. So, um, <laughs> That's what I was working towards. I was always just trying to paint like realistic fantasy paintings. And um, I got pretty good at it. Not too good, like not good enough for magic. Uh -huh. then. Um, but I could make it work to get jobs that way. Uh, but it always felt kind of forced, not really, really right for me. So um, I just went back and explored what I actually liked and what I was actually influenced by. And then all this stuff that I talked about in the very beginning yeah. came up and I just experimented. First, I noticed that my faces and characters looked better when I kept the lines in and not try to paint over them and get right. rid of them. So I experimented with like trying to change different or like find different styles to make that work. I kept the lines and then I painted realistically underneath, kind of like a 3D form rendering, but that didn't really feel right to me. <laughs> and um, yeah, after a lot of trial and error, I landed at this cell shading uh, style that I had used so many times when I was younger. I had always drawn like manga inspired things. Yeah. And uh, whenever I was doing black and white or anything, I was just always using like hard shading on my characters and it was really easy for me it felt natural yeah so something clicked and i was like oh okay i guess i just have to allow myself to do this stuff that i'm good at and that i enjoy and um for the backgrounds it took me a couple of tries to figure that out as well so i was at this cell sh shading stage and i figured i would carry that over to the backgrounds right but that didn't really work. It took me forever to draw every single line. And then I tried to fill it in with like flat colors, but it looked too flat for me. Right. So I didn't have any textures in there, but I really enjoy textures in backgrounds, <laughs> especially with like materials like wood and stone yes. and all that. 
So then I just tried painting it and actually that worked better and I enjoyed that. Yes. Whereas I don't enjoy painting characters, but I like drawing them more. So I just put the two together and I was like, this looks like an animated movie. Right. This is like the <laughs> stuff that I've been consuming all along. Like, why did this take me so long? Right. Yeah, that's yeah. always the question. Why did it take me so long to get to this? Yeah. But oh. it, it does every time. Yeah, and that's why when I watched like your whole journey, uh, your mentorship and everything, I was so invested in it. I was like, oh, I don't feel you. This was me like a year ago, two years ago. Oh, gosh. Like, oh. <laughs> I know. It was a, that's a journey. Yeah. It's crazy. But it's so nice when you come out the other It is. Like, yeah. There's so much clarity. Yeah. So much clarity. And that doesn't mean you'll never change again. Like you can evolve no. and still try new things, but once you've found something that you enjoy and that other people seem to respond to as well, it's just like such a nice feeling because immediately after I changed my style, more people were interested in it. They were like, oh, this, this looks interesting. I can see that this is yours now. And every time I get that comment of people telling me like, hey, I immediately noticed that this was your painting. I'm like, I never got that before. Thank you so much. But at the same time, a lot of people tell me like this looks like Studio Ghibli, and I I love that too. I'm like, yeah, Yay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. <laughs> so, what uh, what kind of things have you been fascinated by lately? Uh, whether that whether that's kind of how you're putting your art together, or subject matter, or what is what is your current kind of fascination Ooh. obsession? Ooh, I just move around to different uh, sorts of places. And yeah. I have this like huge Pinterest collection and uh, I just browse through it and I'm just, I have things where I'm like, oh, at some point I'm going to yes. do this. Right. Now it's the time. And right now <laughs> I'm working on an illustration that features like a large temple. Yes. And that's been one that I had in mind as well. It's not like I'm going through my temple phase right now. Right. But I guess every illustration I do is just a reflection of the thing that I'm most interested in at the moment. Yeah. So sometimes this might be like the sea or a forest or like a temple in the forest. So that's what I'm excited about now. But I also, especially because I can't travel right now, I just like yeah. spend a lot of time on uh, Google Street View. Yes. Just like looking at different places, <laughs> just like wandering through the digital streets. So every time I find a new place that I think is really beautiful, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. What was the yeah. what was the last place you were at? Um, what was that? Oh yeah, I, I was watching uh, Terrace House on uh, Netflix, which is basically like Japanese Big Brother. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were in this like resort, uh, what was it called, Karuizawa. And I was just like, oh my God, every single place they go to, like every restaurant was just like surrounded by greenery. It was amazingly beautiful. So I just went on awesome. like Google Street View and uh, went through there through the forest and everything. It was just like really, really really nice so i love it do you do you have a list of uh, a list of google google earth places that you like keep yeah yeah me yeah too. <laughs> <laughs> have to give me like, your secrets that we can share <laughs> i love it uh we have a couple of questions in here so we can do a little little lightning round have a look through let's not spend too much time on any particular one of them here we go i just graduated from university with a degree in illustration and character design what advice would you have for getting work and contracts? Ooh, getting work. Okay, contracts I'm not good at, but getting work, <laughs> I, I did that before. Um, it's, when I was starting out, I was just sending uh, my portfolio to art directors, and there's a really good article on Muddy Colors by Lauren Panapinto of how to approach art directors, how to send your work, like what information to include, how she prefers to like receive the work, what kind of format, all that sort of stuff. So that's really helpful. And just like, if you don't hear back from them, just stay consistent, keep emailing them, like not every week, but like every half <laughs> a year or so, just like check back in. If you have new work, send that along. And in terms of how to find companies that you can work for, I think a good approach is to check out the artist uh, whose work is kind of in the same 
realm as yours, kind of similar and see who they work for. So then you can find out uh, like what kind of companies are even out there, like what the possibilities are. And yeah, I've also found that there's a lot of stuff that you don't expect, like some options are there. You just have this kind of limited idea of what kind yes, of companies definitely. you can work for, but then there's so much more, like really branch out, don't um, be too narrow-minded about it. What would you say? Um, so practically, I've gotten more work through Twitter than anywhere else. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so I, I just have my stuff up on Twitter. i uh, very friendly with everyone. Just, you know, it's, it's about relationships a lot of the yeah. time. Um, but somehow Twitter is is where I've gotten a lot of work. And I've, I, when I was first starting, I was looking for work in Twitter. So I'd say, like, mm. you know, background artist. And a lot of people want to... They, they, they're going to yell it out to their to their audience or to their friends saying, hey, I'm doing this project, I'm looking for this. And they want to do that before they turn around and have to go through the process of like actually trying to hire someone mm -hmm. um, in any legitimate fashion. So I, I've just found a lot of work through that at the beginning by searching for it, searching for the terms of like, I don't know, illustrator needed or something like That's that. That's really good, yeah. Um, but these days I don't, have to do any of that people come to me and i just so being present on twitter has been yeah. um, a really big thing and i think probably like you and i both found out um if you try to be everything for everyone you mm -hmm. won't get work yeah because when people are looking for work they are looking for a specific thing yeah. and so they have the option of choosing you who can do anything or the person that does the specific thing that they're after and they're going to choose that person yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. I also heard like from a good friend of mine, she is a book cover illustrator and she said she doesn't have that many, like she said she, does, she doesn't have that many, but she does have quite a few followers on there. <laughs> and um, like compared to what other people have on Instagram, it's just like yeah. on Twitter, there's a different crowd of people. There are lots of like authors hanging out, lots of writers yeah. just, yeah, if one of them uh, sees you and shares it on their site, they have they might have like some other author followers who see it in turn, and then it kind of spreads around. So that's a really good place to be. Yeah, I love it. So a couple more questions before we head out. Um, do you have any tips for getting started with backgrounds? Obviously, it's practice and using plenty of reference, but I still find the beginning to be an insurmountable wall most of the time. Yeah. It can be overwhelming. <laughs> That's why I always say, like, start small, start simple. Uh -huh. So I did that with, like, my whole art journey, I think. I started out, like, drawing heads, like, portraits. Yes. Then at some point I got the courage to include, like, more of a body, <laughs> like, upper body maybe. And then I did, like, full figures at some point. And once you have, like, a whole figure or, like, more of a person, you can include some more background elements, like, put a tree in the background. So just, like, not go crazy at first. You don't need to paint a cityscape, but just, like, uh, a person, like, standing in front of a cliff with, like, some clouds in the background. That's nothing crazy. You start with, like, natural elements that don't follow those insanely um, precise perspective rules. So just like, yeah, trees, clouds, rocks, waves, things like that. But also paint the stuff that interests you, like find something about it that is really, that really speaks to you rather than just like, oh, every landscape artist paints this scene of like dead rocks, spiky rocks in the desert. And then you do that and you're like, I'm the background artist. Just like <laughs> <laughs> try to dig in and... and address the stuff that really interests you rather than just trying to do something generic. Absolutely. I think starting simple is very important. Um, okay, next question. Do you think there's a definitive point where your fundamentals are good enough to start a storytelling project? No, no. I think this whole idea of just like, I have to wait until I'm good enough is not great. Just like j jump in and you'll learn on the job. And even if you find like after 10 illustrations, you've improved a ton and the first one doesn't measure up to the 10th, 
you can always like redo those and apply what you've learned i think it's just like challenging yourself because when you practice skills like fundamentals in isolation and you're like i eventually want to do a storytelling project that means i need to do like settings i need to do good body language expression uh, lighting mood all this sort of stuff but you're like i'm going to just practice faces now and like <laughs> maybe paint some rocks here and there and then maybe do a hand study or something it's just like do the thing you eventually want to do and yeah. just see how it goes because if you don't practice that you're not going to get the skill that is required to do it so learn on the job is what i'd say yeah i think art is art is beyond anything else it's communication and so your definitive point of good enough isn't a technical definitive point it's a it's a definitive point of communication does what you're doing communicate what you're trying to communicate if the yeah. answer is yes then whatever it is that you're doing is good enough yeah. um and so if you use that as your metric if you use communication as your metric then yeah you don't actually need to be that good technically um and you can continue to get better at communication by sort of not distracting people by things that are wrong but yeah there's a huge difference you you don't need to be a master draftsman to be a good communicator and a good artist is a good communicator so you don't need to be a master draftsman <laughs> yeah you just you just need to be a good communicator yeah and even if you fail at communicating if you're, if you're like i set out to paint an illustration that communicates one thing but it seems to say another thing that's a lesson you learn and absolutely you try to analyze like what went wrong here how can i change this maybe i can change like the position of the character and maybe i can change the mood and stuff like that yeah so we have reached the end of the episode jamila is there anything really that, really, really yeah it's, so <laughs> it's gone so by so quick is there anything else that you've been um thinking about lately or well i mean i know that you've just been getting your getting your kickstarter already so where can yeah. people find information about your kickstarter oh you can subscribe to my mailing list i'm going to remind you that it's happening and um yeah it's on my website jamilaknop.com at the bottom there's like a little sign up thing and yeah it's really exciting we're yep. going to do a live stream yeah that's what i was going to say we've got a we've got a uh, party going on yeah that's exciting i'm really looking so forward good. to that it's going to me be too. at when is it going to be i'm so bad with times so let me check Da -da -da. It's next week. It's next week. It's Thursday. It's um, what's the time? Oh, yeah, it's two p.m. Berlin time. And for you, what time is that? I'm sorry, it's really early. Um. Oh yeah, it's it's eight a.m. I think. Oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. It is all good. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fun. Like. You're going to be there, and uh, my friends uh, Lorena, Kim, and Chantal, and Ahmed are going to be there, and we're going to have a good time, I think. It is going to be so much fun. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I just wanted to remind you guys that my landscape course is currently open for registration. It is, it's a 12-week course. It's going to have over 30, 40 hours worth of material, including kind of this uh, discrete lessons in fundamentals, which are which are not basic, they're fundamental. They're things that you can kind of keep diving into for the rest of your art career. So um, I know I've gotten much better since I started preparing this course. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to see kind of everyone else be able to grow um, and get sort of direct feedback for their work, which is just so immense. I. I Direct feedback from people that you trust is so good. Yeah. So good. Uh, well, Jamila, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you thank for you. inviting me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I will see you. Fast. It was. That's all right. Next week, we'll hang out for a bit longer. Yes. An hour. <laughs> an hour. So I'll see you next week and I'll see you guys later.